Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are going to be jumping back into our electrical of our 82124 Spider. We still don't have our heater working, our heater fan, I don't want to say our heater because we don't have our engine in it, but our heater fan isn't working, our horns aren't working, and a couple other small things um, aren't really working, uh, at least as of now. In the last episode, we got all of our lights working um, and our blinkers, we replaced our flasher relay um, which is on the right side of the steering column. It's a little round cylinder piece. We replaced that. Um, we, we got all the connections cleaned up and now all the lights work. So that's a big hurdle done and taken care of. Uh, so the next thing is gonna be all those accessories in that center console. So things like I said, our heater uh, fan, um, our horn, and even our brake light switch, when you pull the lever, it's supposed to light up a light as like a warning light. We know the light works on the dash. Um, we saw that last in the last video. I'll make sure to drop a link up here for that. Um, and so we're gonna get things like that sorted out because just like I said in the last episode, we need to make sure all this stuff works. That way when we go to plug the engine in, we know that all the accessories and all the electrical work as far as lights and, and things like that to get us on the road safely when we're ready to do a test drive after rebuilding our engine. We're still waiting on the block, so that's why we haven't had any engine content yet. We've done our cylinder head and shimmed our new cams. I'll also make sure to drop a uh, link up here for that. Um, so we've been able to do as much as we can. We're still working on these little things, these little bugs here and there. So we're gonna jump in on this. It's a little cool today, so you see them all bundled up. So we've got our heater going in the garage. You may hear that in the background. So let's jump in, let's get to work and get that blower mower going. That way um, we won't be cold on a day like this. So let's jump on in. So first things first is we have to chase down one of our problems. So I think the first place we're gonna wanna go is to the horn. Just like last episode, we have our jump pack plugged into our brown wire lead and grounded to our ground that normally hooks up to the transmission, to the body that is grounded. I have our test light into our horn uh, here, where should be power should be coming in. We've got that grounded, so that should light up when we hit the horn. That is on. We're gonna turn our key switch on. Everything comes on and we hit the horn. Not even like no light, nothing. So it looks like we're not getting any power there. I know our horn relay is under there. So we're gonna take a look at that, come around. I plugged in a generic relay, just a general use um, relay, and it took it just fine up here. This should be our horn relay with this little silver tab. Normally these are mounted somewhere else, but I just plugged it in because it fit um, and it's not working there. I know our other relays are good. Um, so maybe we'll plug in one of these and see if it is a different kind of relay. We'll get one of those crossed over and give it a shot. Um, if that still isn't working, then we'll start chasing power. Um, it may be related to this spaghetti mess here. I don't think so, but it's still worth a shot. Um, I know that the horns uh, are grounded to the ground pod, which is right there. There's your ground pod right there. And the power wires are connected. Um, it may also just be a loose connection behind our steering wheel. So there's a couple things that we gotta look at, um, but the easiest, maybe just switch some of the relays really quick. See if that gives it a try and if that works. And if that doesn't work, then I think we'll jump to the wheel, pull off that center cover, and see if we're making any contact with the contacts that are underneath that button. So let's take a little switching around and uh, let's get some updates. All right, so we started to do some diagnosing. As you can see, they're switching around some relays, cleaning up the contacts. And what I've done now is taken the steering wheel off. That's gonna be here on the ground. There's the center connector, which is these three tabs that lock into here. There's a one nut in the middle. And then you've got your two contacts here. So what I've done is I've taken a pair of needle nose and I'm bridging the connection which is when you're deep pressing the horn, your horn, you're completing the connection on the back side here. And you can see that big brass ring. When you push down on it, it eventually pushes on these tabs right here. So when you connect them, if you want to hear it, maybe you'll be able to hear it. You can see the lights dimming. And if you look real close, 
at the test light, which should be right there in the center of your screen, you might see the light come on. See a little orange glow? Off, on, off, on. And you can hear the relay clicking, that one we put in. So that means that our horn is getting power, but maybe not enough, or our horns may not be working. So we know power's coming in, our ground may be dirty, we may need to clean our ground connections. Because when we come off of these here, they come up and our ground is these purple and black. We trace them up to here to this ground pod right here. So what we might need to do is take this off, clean all these terminals that are on there, and reattach it. Um, if you have one like this, every car should have one of these here, and the other one is a cross right there. You can take these off with that nut in the middle, I believe it's a 10. It'll come right off, you can clean it, clean the area underneath it. But we've got a really cool new part to put on here, and I'm gonna show you right now. This is our grounding pod. You can see just how dirty and corroded that is, and you can see what minimal contact that was making. All that dirt and stuff that fell back there, and that shiny circle in the middle is the only part making contact, and those little dots in there are actually from a lock washer stuck behind it. Um, and so it was really making very minimal contact. So what you could do is you could take a small Dremel tool or a wire wheel brush and clean this up so it's nice and new. That's totally budget friendly and it could totally be done. But we are gonna remove that and then put this unit, this is a brand new, of course, from our friends at Vic Auto, stainless steel grounding pod. It's not gonna rust and it's gonna stay nice and clean and shiny to ensure a nice clean connection. So there's a threaded rod that comes through the middle. We're gonna clean up that bolt, um, that rod that comes through, clean up the nut so we have a nice tight connection. And we're also gonna take away a little bit of the paint that's behind it, that way more of this backing makes contact with the body of the car. So we're gonna attach this on there, we'll replace our other one when we get to the other side of the car. But this is what we're gonna stick back in there and keep these as a backup. But these stainless steel units are so nice and they're nice, shiny, who doesn't like shiny? So we're gonna go put this in the car. So our nice new shiny stainless steel grounding pod is installed nice and tight. Again, we removed some paint just to make sure we're connecting to the metal of the car itself, making a good ground connection. We reconnected all of our grounds. So let's give our horn, which is this down here. We'll give them a good try. The power is on. Turn the key. You can hear the power and grab our ultra special tool here. And hopefully this will solve it. Nope. But the light is still lighting up very faintly on the test light. So, we know we're getting power at the front. So that means that maybe our horns may not work. There's a little diaphragm inside of here. It's like sandwiched um, on the top and the bottom. There's a little diaphragm. And what happens is it, it fluctuates that diaphragm and that's what your horn sound is. So those diaphragms may be broken and could be blown out or they could just be really dried and cracked and so they can't vibrate anymore. So I think we're gonna have to pull these open them up and take a look. They could just need a cleaning. Yeah, ideally that's all it would take, but we won't know until we find out. So let's get them out, let's get them on the bench and let's take a look. Here's one of our horns. So the purple and black wire actually grounds in the gap in between the bracket and the horn itself. 
and being in the front of the car, it often experiences the rain and the road debris and the grime and stuff kicked up by other cars. So that might very well be part of our issue is the grounding of this wire. So we know our grounding on the side of the car is good with a nice new Vic Auto stainless grounding pod. Now this may be our problem because it is so dirty. Um, that light was super faint, so it wasn't very bright, so there wasn't a very good current, which means that there's a lot of resistance, and resistance could be right here. So we're gonna crack this top. Should be a 10 millimeter, which it is. Just like that. And when we first take a look, oh yeah, that's, um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's, uh, there's dust falling off of it. It's all dirty. It's not very bright and shiny silver like it should be. This locking washer's dirty. Look at that. That's real dirty. So this very well could be part of our problem. So what we'll do is we'll clean up our contact, our positive lead, and our ground to the body of it. It's right here. We're gonna clean this up and we'll go plug this one in and see if it'll work. So the horn is now hooked back up. We don't have it physically mounted where it normally goes. We've just got to kind of hang in here on the bottom where the power wire is attached. Our ground wire goes straight to our grounding pod. So we are going to turn the key. The power is on. Don't forget to turn your power back on. Turn the key, grab our ultimate horn tool, and we're going to try it again. Hey. can see how much brighter that light is. And we're good here. So, there we go. Let's clean up our other one on the bench and get it installed. So both horns are back installed. They have the power hooked up and we've got to reattach our grounds. So those are gonna feed up through here with a lot of our wiring harness. They're gonna attach right into our grounding pod, our nice stainless steel, right here. Attach it right in just like that. And of course, we can always go back and retuck these wires when we get the engine inside. So we're gonna look right here at the test light and it should give us a nice bright light compared to that very faint one we had when we first started. Both horns are cleaned up, so let's give them a try. All right, key is on, and let's give the horn a shot. Ah. So, it looks like one of the two isn't wanting to work for us. So let's unplug one and see if we get a different uh, result here. Take that test light out. All right, so one, we'll plug this one back in. We'll unplug the second one and see if it works also. And if it does, that means we just don't have enough battery, I think, in our jump pack to power both horns. But we're gonna try it anyway. All right, and other one. All right, so there's your answer. So, this one on the outside, man, it's not getting a good connection. Ah, let me show you. So we come and look on our grounding pod here on the side. Look how loose that one is. So we're gonna recrimp that and try it again. So those are reconnected and this is our other one, our trouble one. So let's try it again. Beep, beep, beep. 
so that one works. So we're gonna take this one, our left one, back out and see what's going on. Um, it may be uh, this one is bad because it's closer to the inside, it gets more action than the inside one, I don't know. But we're gonna take it out, um, unplug it here from our ground pod and open it up and uh, we'll take a look. Before we go too deep into tearing this all apart and looking on the inside, we can do a bench test with our power supply. Now you can do this with a regular 12 volt battery. All we're gonna do is attach positive to our power lead and then grounds it to the outer case. And I've got a power supply with these leads that'll do it, but like I said, a battery, you can do the same thing. So we're gonna turn our power supply on. We have it at 12 and a half volts. So if we apply one side, my thing is it all wonky to here. It's like it's wanting to. You can kind of hear it. Hear it clicking on the inside and my power supply is clicking and saying it doesn't like it. Not quite there. So it is this horn on the inside. So we're gonna pop these little screws out and see what's going on. So we've got those four little screws out and we're gonna pop this open. And our mechanicals on the inside look really, really clean. That's great. And this is our diaphragm cover and the diaphragm here. You can see all this debris in here. You can see where some moisture is trying to make its way in. You can see where it's just falling apart. So that may be our answer as to why we have an issue that's part of sealing out the diaphragm but it's not ripped or anything so that's a good sign um, but when it comes to this side what happens is it charges these coils and it vibrates this little pin i don't know how well you're going to see that this little pin right here vibrates up and down and that's what causes this to to honk is the, is the vibration there so I don't know if there's a bad, you can see there's, well, maybe not. There's a, there's witness marks on there where it's a little shinier where the bottoms of these two coils touch. Um, so I'm just taking a closer look, but it's so clean in here. So we can probably take our power supply, power it up. Again, you can do this with a battery. Gonna put it on our positive. And then we're gonna attach it to our... So we're getting spark. Well, it's clean, you know? I don't know what uh, would cause that to go bad. There's a little bit of debris down in there, but the diaphragm is just old, you know, that's what I'm gonna call it. It's just old, um, especially when it crumbling apart like that and it's all rusted. Um, I don't know, we'll throw it back together, try it one more bench test and if it doesn't work, we can work with one for now until we uh, call our good friends at Vic Auto to get ourselves a new set of horns. And it looks like these sit a certain way, just like that. And if this doesn't work, then we will give them a call and see what they think. It'd be really cool to get a super vintage kind of horn, something kind of classic. Um, but these are the ones that came with it. So true to try to be true to the car, um, to what it is and not go too crazy, but gotta have fun with it sometimes, you know? So. There's that. Gonna align it with our base here. And just like that, 
we're going to reassemble this and give it a shot. Okay, so we've got it back together. We are going to give it a shot. The power supply is on. I'm not having, not holding out much for this. Um, but like I said, one is better than none right now, at least to pass inspections and things like that. So here we go. Yeah, nothing. We can hear that diaphragm moving up and down, but it's not doing anything. So this one's gonna be a dud. We saw all the rust on that diaphragm. It's not gonna do us any good, um, but one is better than none for now. We can always find another set of used ones online, or as always, we can reach out to our friends at Vic Auto and they'll have another set of these that we can toss right on real easy. And we saw how easy it is to replace these. So I'm gonna call this a win for now. We've got one, not two, but I'm gonna call that a win. That way we can move on to the next thing, which is gonna be our, I wanna say our blower motor. So we're gonna try our blower motor and see if we can get that to work and feel a little bit better, you know, having that work all the way and not just one for two. So let's jump on into the next thing. Next on the list is gonna be that blower motor. So I'm gonna turn the key on. We've got power in. I'm leaving this disassembled for now. And let's see what we've got. Mm, nothing. So let's grab a test light and see if we have power. Grab our test light here and see if we're lucky enough to have power. I'm gonna set you guys here. Hopefully y'all can see something. Whoop, if I don't drop you first. How about there? Nope, okay. I'm just gonna have to hold you then, I guess. So we're gonna ground out our test light there and see if we have power coming in. Nope. No. No power whatsoever. Looks like the previous owner does have a label on there that says fan. So we're gonna follow these back to the fuse box and see what we can find. And maybe it's not even connected. If only it was that easy, but we can look from the side here that this terminal is nice and green and corroded. So that's not helping us at all any anyway, but we just don't have any power coming in. So let's do some digging. Now I'm sure some of you were yelling at me through your screen right now, cause you saw it and I didn't, but I found out why our wires are not getting power because you know, they're just not connected at all. So now we need to find a hot lead. That's probably a red wire. Um, or a yellow and black and I don't see that right off hand so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my test light and start probing around with the key on to see what uh, connectors have power so they may have power on and they may not because um, there's a lot of connectors under here that just go to nothing and maybe that'll give us an answer maybe not so let's do some uh, digging around and see what we can find. All right, so I've done some research and I found a wiring diagram online. I'll make sure to put a link in the description down below. But it says that the light blue and black attaches to another light blue and black that's directly attached to the blower motor. So I looked underneath the dash and I found that. Our red attaches to another red and our yellow attaches to a brown wire. So it's not yellow all the way back. So when I come in here, I follow it back, keep going, keep going, keep going in here. So they're actually tucked up real close to it and you might be able to see it here. They're actually attached into the blower motor up there. So I took a jumper and I grounded that down here to the car. And our other two switches are in the corresponding uh, connections for the blower motor. So I'm gonna turn our power on. We've got power and we're gonna hit the switch. Hey, it works. You can feel it. Well, you're not going to be able to see anything, but it works. And then low. 
Oh yeah. And if we took our controls here, you can see the the gate drop down there. It's a little. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys would be able to hear that because you guys have got the, the little sock on your ear. So that works. That's great. Man, that's awesome. We're gonna kill our power. So when we go to rewire the, the center here, when we get it all together, we know that these go together and I'm sure there's a grounding location on the dash up above that that goes into. It's already got the ring connection, so it makes it super easy to attach. So these are done. Blower motor works and is uh, found. Got that all situated just from finding a real simple and easy wiring diagram off our phones. So next is gonna be our handbrake warning light. So up here on the dash. So what happens is there's a switch here on the bottom and when this is depressed, it should turn off the light, but when it's on, the light should be on. So when we first turn on the car, we see that the light switch works, but that would make sense right now because our light is on, but we see nothing happens when I hit the switch. So going back to my wiring diagram, make sure we turn off our power. What I found is there's a purple and white wire, which is gonna be this one here. It's got an ugly boot on it that's been destroyed, which would make sense because you don't want it to ground out while it's underneath there. So that's gonna be our connector here to the underside. I'm gonna have to get out and really look underneath here. But if we replug this in back into this switch, that might just solve our problems. And that'll be our last thing off the list. So let me get underneath here, plug this in and see what we can come up with. So we've got that purple to white wire attached under here, but I hit the button and you can see nothing really happens as I'm hitting it. But when I wiggle the wire, yeah, there we go. So we've just got a bad connection underneath here. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. But you can see that, well, someone's definitely been there. You see a little orange zip tie. There's the spade connector right underneath it, and that's where it attaches. So what we're gonna need to do is pull that out. I think it's just a piece of rubber, really, that you can just pull up and out, and that should fix it. Now you can, of course, keep this disconnected and you'll never have the warning light, but I kinda like it, because I think we've all forgotten a time or two. So all we have to do is pull that out and clean up the connection and maybe it'll work. All right, so the last thing we did was attach a jumper from our positive side to that yellow wire that most likely came from that connector where that little butt connector was. We have our ground, our purple and black here, and it does have a bulb in it. I'm not gonna hold my breath that it's any good. We're gonna hit the switch. Oh, no way. The thing works. How awesome is that? I don't know if the if the dome light switches it is a different circuit, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But the fact that that works is awesome, so awesome. Everything works in the car. I don't know what this one is. More to find out later. More stuff to play with. Turn on for power, so I don't short anything out. Two different switches, so one's for the fan. I don't know if that's another one, um, or if there's a control for each side. If they're parallel, I don't know. If you know, put in the comments down below what you know the other switch is for. One's obviously for the fan, but does each side have their own fan button and it's not in the center console? Or does this go to something else? I don't know, you tell me in the comments. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's episode. We got a lot done today. We've got our blower motor figured out, high and low works. Our courtesy light in the center console works. Even the light bulb is still good. We have our parking handle, our, our handbrake light, our warning light is still good and that works. And our horn works, well, one out of the two works, but I'll take that 50% is pretty good. We got a lot solved today and we are very, very fortunate to have all of that wiring still intact and in good working order. I'm going to knock on wood so that luck doesn't run out. But as far as I can tell, everything on this car electronically works. We had to replace a couple bulbs in last episode, had to relay this episode and 
and refix um, some connections that got broken um, in the process of that center console getting ripped out. There are a bunch of wires still hanging there that don't have connectors. I have a feeling that's all associated with the aftermarket air conditioning system. So we'll have to do some research on that and hopefully, cross your fingers, find another one that we can actually install and put back in this car because I would love, love, love to have air conditioning here down in Texas. It doesn't look like it right now, but I promise down here in Texas we need it, especially in the summers with that top down. So thank you guys so much for watching. Just make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. That way I can continue to make content for you guys and keep putting cars like this back on the road. Please subscribe, it really helps me out. So until next time guys, we'll see ya.